Okay, in this video we're going to use uh, a couple tools that are pre-installed to locate and track LTE base station cells uh, using the RTL SDR. I know I keep jumping back and forth between virtual machines and real machines, but I I highly suggest that you install Dragon OS uh, on an actual laptop or, or personal computer and not use it in a virtual machine. The performance is just not very good with the uh, using the SDL or SDR through the USB pass through for, through virtual machines. It just doesn't work well. But if I'm not doing a whole lot, then I can um, seem to be able to get away with it working uh, within a virtual machine. So the software we're going to use is pre-installed. It's older. I mean, you can see the last commit here was in 2012. And to get it running, I had to, to uh, look at both the a combination of the issues and the pull requests to see what needed to be changed to get it to a build on uh, Debian 10 and, and actually work. So you can uh, come here and I'll put this in the description. You can read more about what the software does. Um, you can look, there's actually a another a GitHub page for a build that uh, works with the HackRF. Uh, but I didn't bother with that for right now. So, if you've installed Dragon OS and you have your RTL SDR plugged in, and I guess depending on what uh, frequencies are available in your area, uh, you can you can take a look here and use your source and see where. Uh, the source code if you wanted to pick it apart and see how I got it to work but there it is uh, and it and it's actually already installed so you can uh, there's two parts to it actually sorry and you can see some of the options here uh, big thing is the start and end frequency and then the PPM which on the RTL SDR, I'd have to look it up to be sure, but I think they claim it's about 0.5. Uh, you can do s some checks to see, or to narrow it down exactly what it is for your particular RTL SDR. But in my case, I was perfectly fine running this uh, with a, a dash P of, I just threw that in there. I mean, I'm sure I could probably Put it at 0.5, 1, 2, it probably still would be fine. I've ran this cell search before, so I know there's something around the 7, 731 or so megahertz. Uh, but if you widen it up, which they give an example here, and you run through, you will well, eventually find, hopefully, uh, something active on one of those frequencies. So you start this up. You're probably, if you're running it in a virtual machine, you're probably going to see those zero copy buffers. But we'll let it run here for just a few seconds. I'm waiting until it gets about 7.31 or so, I think it is. And I've been able to find something around that area. Okay, so, so we detected a cell. I can stop it there. And you can see in the uh, quick usage instructions here how you use the second part of the tool specifying with a dash F and the frequency. So in my case, I'm going to narrow it down to this specific frequency. I'll let it run. And just, I mean, we can, we, I missed something here. I don't want to make the whole video over again, but you can also specify the, um, the PPM here as well. Otherwise it defaults to like uh, 120 I think it is so now to pull up the LTE tracker 
window and we can see it's limited but you can see some information uh, in, about that actual cell ID. All right, and that'll get you at least started. Uh, I've taken a lot of the work already out of it by uh, getting it pre-installed in the Dragon OS itself. You don't have to mess around trying to compile code, code from seven or eight years ago. It already just works.